Hey, it's Charlie here. Today is going to be our first video on a brand new series. And uh, on this build, I'll, I will be uh, continuing my journey down the computer rabbit hole, as you will. And I'm titling this project uh, TTL Computer 2. And uh, this is going to be uh, an 8-bit TTL computer again um, with quite different goals than uh, I had with my TTL computer. So our first goal is that we will have a TTL uh, logic for all, all CPU elements. And I'm saying qualifying CPU elements here because I haven't decided uh, what I will be doing for the uh, for the UART. So that it may be a strictly TTL solution for the UARTs and or it may be not. I'm giving myself a little wiggle room <laughs> For, for those elements. Uh, our next goal is going to be no breadboarding. So that was kind of the theme of my TTL computer was breadboards from beginning to end and uh, working and reworking and adding wires and removing wires. And our goal here for this project is no breadboarding. So you say to yourself, well, Charlie, how are we gonna do that? So we're gonna be designing using uh, digital simulation uh, for pretty much every piece of TTL computer too. Uh, our next goal is going that we're gonna, uh, instruction set will be designed and validated in the digital simulation phase. So the goal here is that uh, we will, you know, realize uh, the hardware in the digital simulation will design and implement the instruction set uh, and then run that through in the simulation. So we'll be able to run sample programs in the digital simulation. Other goal here is gonna be modular PCB design and manufacturing. So these are like two of the really big uh, challenges for me in this project. One is the, uh, the digital uh, digital design using simulation, haven't done that before. And I've never designed and had a PC board manufactured, believe it or not. I know I'm very late to the game. Uh, everybody does that now, but um, I will be jumping in the uh, PCB design and manufacturing pool, <laughs> if you will, and uh, taking a dip and getting wet there. So that uh, should be uh fun. And I think that's where the project is going to slow down a bit, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Physical stack pointer. So last time in my TTL, we had, um, we didn't have a physical stack pointer. We did it all in, uh, we did it in RAM. We're going to have a physical stack pointer uh, for TTL computer too. And we, I want to support uh, immediate uh, addressing, register addre addressing, relative and indexed addressing. Okay, so those are our, our main goals for the project. And uh, I think you can see from these uh, goals that this project is going to proceed uh, very differently than uh, what we saw in uh, my TTL computer uh, project. Okay, so let's take a look at our project architect our system architecture. So again, this is much, much different than uh, what we saw in my TTL computer, which is basically was an SAP one implementation. So I've taken uh, the core of this design, I think maybe I will say, from the magic one uh, system architecture. It's uh, cut back a lot from what magic one did, but um, a lot of the key elements uh, in the physical architecture are, are uh, carried forward from the Magic One design. And those being that um, we have uh, we have four we have four buses in the system. We have a 16-bit address bus, we have our 8-bit data bus, and we have two um, two buses that feed the ALU. So all ALUs, most ALUs, take two operands. They take a left and a right operand. And those operands will be um, fed from the respective buses, right? From the left bus uh, for the left argument operand and the right bus for the right operand. 
So um, we'll, I'm going to walk through this in a little bit more detail. I'm going to hold that off just a bit, and we'll come back to uh, back to how all that works with the ALU. And I'm sure this looks strange because um, it did to me when I first saw it in the Magic One architecture, but I came to like it very much and uh, works. Uh, I think it's going to work pretty well. All right, so our first register uh, is an 8-bit register, which I'm calling the X register. And this really holds the data for the uh, right operand. We have the ALU, uh, which again, we'll come back to that. We have the A register, which is going to be an 8-bit register, B register and C register, also 8-bit uh, registers. And these are all going to be um, you know, user accessible. We have the stack pointer, Stack pointer is going to be an 8-bit register, uh, and that's going to work um, pretty much like the stack pointer in the 6502. 6502 also only had uh, an 8-bit stack pointer, and uh, the stack pointer is basically the lower the lower nibble of the of the 16-bit stack pointer, and the uh, top nibble uh, was always FF, and so we're going to be using that same approach here. We have our program counter, which is obviously going to be 16-bit program counter. We have our 8-bit instruction register, which feeds the uh, our control unit. And we will have uh, 24 control lines uh, for TTL Computer 2. Now, let's come back to the ALU. And, um, the ALU is going to be uh, implemented using the 74LS181, I believe it is, the uh, ALU uh, chip that was prominent in that in that era, and we'll be using that again. And um, so, let me just kind of walk through how this is how quickly how the registers are going to be used. Let's say we wanted to uh, add re add registers A and B together, and we want to store the result in register A. So what the microcode is going to have to do is uh, you see that all these registers are all on the left on the left bus. They're the left operand. So the ALU, need, ALU needs a left and a right operand. So how do we get how do we get B here? So what we do is we um, you know raise B out uh, control and uh, the B is output on the left bus. We basically do an OR. We do an OR, a logical OR operation in the ALU. So that will output B, that will put B on the data bus, and we do an X in, right? So that transferred the B to the X register uh, out this way through the ALU on the data bus and into the X, into the X register. Now we can do the at we could do the add operation. So we put A out on the left bus. We put X out on the right bus. We do the add, so the add's out on the on the data bus, and that we get, you know, pipe back into A. So that's how the flow of uh, of the data for all of these registers works uh, with the ALU. So we really use the ALU as uh, in two roles. We use the AL, ALU in a you know in an, a, a math and a logical operations role. Uh, adding numbers and such, uh, doing exclusive wars and such on, on, on the operands. But we also use it just as a data path to route things from uh, out, route things from the left bus to the data bus, right? Through the ALU. And then we can route them to anything that's connected to the to the data bus. Okay, so you'll have to think about that and run it through your head. Uh, it sounds wonky. Uh, it's actually uh, very efficient to do that, to route it through the ALU. Uh, we're not, we don't incur any extra instruction ticks to do that. It's a very, uh, it's just setting up the control lines the right way to get the data to flow. And uh, what's really good about this approach is that, um, right, we can do math on any of these registers, right? When we have A and let's say we had A and B hardwired to the ALU, we're stuck with only being able to use operations on A and B. With this approach, we can do operations pretty much between you know, any of these registers. 
uh, we can do math, we can do math up ALU operations on uh, that are connected to the left bus. Okay, then um, we have our mem memory address register, uh, which right takes data from the uh, the data bus and puts our address out on the address bus. So we are going to have um, a dedicated uh, ROM. Uh, we're going to have dedicated RAM, and then we're going to have n number of devices. All of our devices will be um, memory mapped. So we won't have any control signals required for you know any of the devices, any of the specific devices that are on the uh, the address bus and the data bus here. They'll all just um, require um, right access to the address bus, access to the data bus, and to the um, the read and write control signals. Right, and each device uh, needs to determine on its own whether those those uh, read and write um, operations are meant for themselves uh, or not. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to say about our architecture of oh, the flags, right? So obviously the we're going to have uh, two flags are going to be tracked by the system, the carry flag and the zero flag. And obviously these flags are fed into the, uh, into the uh, control unit. And uh, we are going to use, um, my intent here is that we are going to use six bits for the instruction uh, in, in the control register. So that means that we're going to have uh, 64 instructions in our instruction set. Okay, so I think that's all I had today. Um, I said, I said, this is going to be a pretty exciting project for me. Um, we're going to see a lot of progress, uh, a lot of progress uh, and satisfaction <laughs> uh, quickly in, in this project because of the the digital simulation. So we're going to see a lot of results, you know, even up to running running the computer, you know, in the simulation and executing instructions and executing programs. We're going to kind of see that, you know, happen pretty pretty quickly. And uh, once that's all validated and we've got our instruction set designed and validated, then we'll kind of move to, uh, you know, the the physical design phase. And uh, that's where the project is going to go proceed at a, at a little bit slower pace. But all that said, uh, next video we're going to kick right off with the we're going, to, we're going to jump into the digital simulation, and I think we will begin with the heart of the uh, heart of the CPU, which is going to be the uh, the clock circuit. So we'll jump right into that. So hey, I hope I'm sure this is going to be an exciting project. Um, I think that you'll be able to uh, add input as things are proceeding. I'll, I'll try and, um, you know, ask for comments and look for comments, uh, you know, in the video comments and uh, have this be a, a bit of a collaborative effort. So again, I think it's going to be a great, great project. Okay, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.